Let's bring on our next guest who risks life and limb chasing extreme weather just for fun. He's played in fierce hurricanes, tornadoes and dodged hailstones the size of grapefruits. Please welcome storm junkie Stuart Robinson. You're a crazy man, aren't you? Um, yeah, I've certainly done some crazy things over the years. Um, it was uh, many years ago, actually. Uh, you're probably going to ask what got me into all this, but... Uh... No, I was going to ask you what shoe size you were, because I do oh, have a right, yeah, okay, <laughs> man up boots I'm trying to offload. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, I mean, how, how, did, how did all this storm chasing happen for you? Um, it was about 96. My wife, well, my girlfriend, now wife, uh, took me to see the film The Twister. And, you know, I was sitting there in the cinema and there was all these cars and they were chasing these storms in America and these tornadoes were forming. And I came out of the cinema and said to, uh, said to my wife, you know what, I'd actually quite like to see one of those with my own eyes. And I got the usual, well, don't be so stupid, and, you know. But that idea never went away. And uh, about four years later, I saw a, something on the news. A tornado had hit a town in America, and it was April. And I said, do you know what, Alison? This is peak tornado season now. I'm going to get myself over to America and try and see one of these tornadoes. Of course, the first year I absolutely failed, and I'll be honest with you, I failed on the next year. But in year three, I actually got to see my first tornado. <laughs> Since then, I've been going back every single year, and I've now seen 59 tornadoes uh, in all. Is, is the knack incurring the wrath of God? <laughs> do you have to piss off God to find a tornado? <laughs> How do you miss out two years in a row, Stuart? How do you hold on to that belief? To be honest, the trick is not to piss off the wife. Ah. That's the... <laughs> That's the thing, because I spend a lot... Look, I'll be honest with you, I, in, in May and August... Uh, sorry, in May and June, I'm, I'm at home with the bag packed. And if I, I'm watching the weather on my computers at home, and if I see the conditions coming together where storms will form and there could be an outbreak of severe weather, I'll literally book a flight, grab my bag and go at a moment's notice. What? How quickly is your turnaround, then, if you, when you get weather? Oh, absolutely. Um, within hours. Absolutely within hours. Um, I, can, I can be out of the house in, in, like, six hours flat from, like, making the decision sure. to go to... and you're married. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you having an affair? No, I'm not. <laughs> 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 actually, just to show everyone how close yeah. he actually gets to the action, we have a little bit of footage, probably shot from your own home video. You're with one of your storm-chasing American yeah. buddies in a car. Have a look at this. This is how close he gets. Just in front of this van. Hello, I don't have time. There's a big tornado on the ground right in front of me. I'll call me back later. <laughs> oh. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Tornadoes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just stop the tornado. Excuse me, sir, could you mind pulling over to the side of the road? I'm sorry, this tornado can't cross state lines. <laughs> it's extremely dangerous, though, to talk on the phone when you're driving, just pointing yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah. And just... why is Elvis driving the truck as well? I mean, you're getting pretty close to the tornado yeah. there. The, the police have obviously set up a roadblock. They. I'd imagine hate the sight of you guys because it's a pretty dangerous situation. Tornado is moving towards you. Why would you do something like that, you crazy man? Well, if you want to get reasonably close to it to actually hear the thing. Um, you it know, just goes. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it sounds like a waterfall. Does it? it? Sounds like running water when you really? get close. Yeah. When you get really close to it, don't you can... go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing this purely for leisure. That's right. But obviously, these, these, uh, these forces of nature are extremely destructive. And a lot of, like, sometimes it'll plough through a little redneck yeah. town. Like. Mm. I mean, what do the inhabitants of these small towns think of? Their lives have just been ruined, and you're there taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, do, is there any kind of culture clash? With yeah, you? there is a little bit. Look, when I turn up in a small, town, small farming town in the, in the corn belts of Kansas, you know, they, they don't get many visitors. And the yeah. fact that there's someone from 5,000 miles away with an English accent, you know, originally there. Who's that? Initially there, <laughs> oh, wow, pleased to meet you, you know, where you're from. And then you kind of start explaining what you're doing and you say you're a storm chaser and you're looking for severe weather, and you can almost see their eyes glaze over as the realisation comes. You know, if you're here, then that doesn't mean that we're going to get bad weather right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just want me to go. Yeah, you're going to go into the Lansbury. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what's it like? What's it like when you're right in the, in the thick of a, a tornado like that? What, describe the sensation, the sounds, just the chaos. Well, I can describe the winds. Um, when the winds are blowing at about 45 miles an hour, that, that's, that's actually strong enough that you can't, you struggle to walk into it. You can lean into the wind and, you know, it'll start running lines across your face. 
Once the wind gets up to about 60 or 70 miles an hour, sustain wind. You have to actually, you can't stand up, you'll be on your knees. Once it gets up to about 80 miles an hour, that's all four, so it's impossible for you to stand up because you'll just be rolled right over. And to be honest, the strongest wind speed I've ever measured in the wind is a 93 miles an hour, and I was literally flat prone on the ground like that. The wind is really powerful at knocking you over. At 100 miles an hour, I've seen parked cars bobbing down the road like that, with the wind just rocking them over and knocking them down Have the road. Have you tried them Dyson hand dryers? <laughs> 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 but it's, it's, it's very right? dangerous, yeah. It, it is dangerous, and there's been occasions when I've... Uh, I have actually been at fear for my own life. Um, there's a couple of occasions that come to mind, but one of them in particular was... When you told your wife you're going off to chase a tornado. <laughs> yeah, but really I was in Leeds. But... <laughs> I knew it. I, knew it was, uh, <laughs> I went to intercept uh, Hurricane Ike that made landfall on Galveston Island. Uh, oh, which yeah, is the south yeah, bit. that was a big one. Right? Um, Tina, when you say intercept, that sounds like you're standing there going... <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's about the truth. I wanted to get into the very eye of the hurricane. You know, right. the, the calm bit in the eye. It's very difficult to do. Now, I was on the barrier island of uh, Galveston, and that was the scene of one of America's most... Well, what is the biggest natural disaster? I think 1902, uh, 9,000 people drowned on Galveston Island from another hurricane. But anyway, the hurricane's getting closer and the winds are getting stronger. And I'm actually hunkered down in the corner of a multi-storey car park, and just as the eye is coming towards me, the winds that go around the, the eye itself, the eye wall, are really intense. And this whole thing's shaking, and it's rumbling like that. And I'm actually thinking, oh, you know, I've gone too far. And then the seawall collapses. Mm. All the water starts pouring in. I'm, I'm on the, sort of like the third floor of a multi-storey car park, and it floods straight the way up to the first level. So I'm now flooded, I'm trapped with the, this hurricane coming towards me. And, you know, that was a really long 20 minutes I had to wait until the winds calmed down, and I was actually in the eye of the eye of the storm itself and that gave me a bit of a sort of opportunity to sort of catch my breath and everything but that was that was really scary i honestly thought you know there is no escape here Stuart. you've just got to accept whatever the weather and is, is it right. as calm as everybody yeah it, it is. absolutely is the first the wind rushing from say 130 150 miles an hour takes about five minutes to, to decay to, to zero um the first thing you notice is it's incredibly warm really really hot and, and humid in the eye of the hurricane mm. If you look at the, the puddle in front of you, you won't see a ripple. It's flat calm. But what you can hear is this, this weird noise around you. It, it kind of sounds like aeroplanes all rushing all around you. But it's, it's actually the wind that's, that's, you know, that's circulating around the eye wall. Now, the eye walls tend to be about 20 miles in diameter. Hurricane moving at about 20 miles. So you've got about an hour in the eye wall. So it's, it's, it's long enough. But then, of course, the, the, the southern edge of the eye wall will come towards you. You'll start, start feeling a few drops of rain a little bit of wind, and it's like turning on a switch <clears throat> as, as the full force of the hurricane comes back. How do you get out of it? How do you get out? Because I imagine when you hit that wall, that's the dangerous bit when it'll pick you up and, and, and fling yeah. you around. You just have to hunker down, basically. Is there a lot of competition between the storm chasers? Yeah. When you're out there, you see other guys, and well, they're going to get there first, and they're going to get the best footage. Do you know, there's, a, there's something worse than arriving to a storm late and missing a storm that's produced a tornado, and you've missed it, and they're all standing around going, you know, look at this, Stuart, and you see the video, and you realise you've missed something. And no matter how great the video is or the view you've got, you can almost guarantee there's someone around the corner that's caught something just slightly better or, or something like that. How many of you are there? Um, tornado chasers, uh, you know, worldwide, there's probably a lot. There's probably about 500. Hurricane chasers who do it seriously, there can't be more than 20 of us worldwide. What's the difference between a hurricane and a tornado? OK, a, a tornado forms from a thunderstorm. It's a classic sort of twister, yeah, yeah. that column of, uh, column of fast rotating air that comes down. Yeah. That's a tornado. A hurricane forms over the tropics, over the oceans. It's like 600 miles in diameter. If you see it from space, it looks like a Catherine wheel. Yeah. And right in the centre is that is calm eye? eye that I'm trying what about to... a typhoon? A typhoon and a hurricane is exactly the same what thing. What about Maelstrom? Uh, well, <laughs> something out of the Bible. <laughs> it's just a name that they've... Uh, they, what about they... Storm? I don't know where Storm came from. How about Thunder Snow? Yes, now Thunder Snow. Um, actually, I've, I've only ever seen it twice. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Thunder Snow! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry, he's our own personal superhero, Thund Thundersnow. I've seen Thundersnow. I saw Thundersnow in Dublin two weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Yep. What is it? Explain to us, Stuart. Well, basically, it's a, it is a thunderstorm. Instead of it dropping rain, it's dropping snow. So you get the odd bolt of lightning. And what's interesting, if, if you see Thundersnow, the lightning bolts are actually pink. Yes. They're actually pink, whereas with a normal thunderstorm, with the rain, they've got their blue. Yeah. It's so completely true. Honestly, I was, yeah. well, I was driving down to do the show. And it was out to see sort of host direction and, yeah, and it was just a huge oh, battle of pink mm. fork lightning. Yeah. How many people die, uh, storm chasers die? 
you know, there has never, ever been a recorded incident of a storm chaser dying. Oh, that's good news. Few have gone missing. Yet, yeah. <laughs> 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 this is uh, this this isn't Kansas anymore. Um, why am I wearing red shoes? <laughs> You've obviously made a documentary. Are you going to keep filming these storms? Are you going to see more of you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've um, I've got a trip booked in May. Uh, that'll be tornado season. Um, I'm still desperately trying to get a uh, uh, another hurricane in. I didn't get an opportunity this September. Um, if the opportunity arises, uh, the next big severe weather window will be uh, northwestern Australia in February. And um, I'm really sort of watching, um, as you know, with all the flooding that they're getting down there right mm. now, the, everything's coming together. And, you know, if they get a big tropical cyclone <laughs> down in Australia, I'm there. Sounds just, like a perfect yeah. disaster, Stuart, doesn't it? Is. <laughs> the weather forecast is like porn to you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming along tonight. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't meet many people who've been to hurricanes, so thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Robinson, thank you very much. Yeah. A big thank you to Stuart. A big thank you to Johnny Logan. Mr. Andrew Maxwell, <laughs> Bernard O'Shea, <laughs> Neil Delamere, <laughs> Colin Murphy, <laughs> and of course, as always, to all of you for watching. Good night.